Hello, beautiful divine souls. Welcome back to Goddess Unleash or Goddess of Rebirth, the podcast that dives deep into the conversation that matters most to you from health and wellness to the mysteries and joys of life. I'm Monica, your host, and today we're embarking on a truly special journey. In this episode, we're exploring a topic close to the hearts of many, the journey towards conception and the beautiful, intricate process of preparing for a pregnancy. It is a path filled with hope, dreams, and of course, a fair share of challenges. I'm thrilled to introduce our guest for today, Maggie Wu. Maggie is not only a renowned educator, but also a passionate advocate for healthy, conscious pregnancy. Her dedication to empowering others with knowledge and support during this crucial life stage is nothing short of inspiring. Maggie is here to share her personal experience as she prepares for conception, offering insights into the physical, emotional, and mental preparations that come with this life-changing endeavor. Maggie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Maggie Gu. I live in Suzhou, China. I'm so happy you can be here. Thank you so much, Maggie. Um, she Maggie has been married for over one year, and her journey of preparation towards pregnancy has been very interesting. She has a lot of wisdom to share with us today, and I'm very excited to get to talk to her about this topic. Maggie, tell us what the journey of preparation to pregnancy has been like for you. Uh, uh, 艰辛的过程，呃，但是这个是我觉得是因人而异的，就对于有的女生来说是比较简单，对于有的女生来说可能会比较困难。那么，所以呃，我觉得可能会有很多女生需要这方面的帮助。那么今天我就想和大家分享
reduce, uh, re yes, reduce the consumption of alcohol, tobacco. Well, actually, alcohol, tobacco is forbidden. Uh, is yeah. that what, am I getting yeah. it right? Yeah. And then milk tea is a very popular drink here in China, but it's sweet drinks that in America, in the West, we do have soda and like all these sweet drinks that we take all the time, coffee. So what Maggie's saying is not, you don't have to completely quit. If you can, perfect. But if yeah. you cannot, then you have to reduce your consumption to very low levels. Yeah, like me, I cannot leave coffee <laughs> in work a day well, so hard. i just reduce <laughs> great yeah mm. uh, and uh, uh, the next part is about uh, medicine health so chinese government courage uh, chinese female need to take uh, fo folic acid mm. folic acid yeah, yes before three months uh three months before you want to pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, so this medicine can reduce fetal malformation rates. So it's a very important. Every girl need to take this. Mm -hmm. Some girls, uh, and then some girls uh, will choose to uh, do physical examination. Mm -hmm. So it will check your uh, uterus, mm -hmm. uh, your hormones, and uh, your discharge. Yeah, it, all the fluids that you are constantly discharging from your body like every single level of fluids and hormones in your body need to be checked even before you plan or you start um trying to get pregnant yeah. very important yeah 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 uh, and for uh, males uh, they also need to do examination mm -hmm. uh, like uh, take about blood sample yeah a blood sample uh, uh, yeah mm -hmm. to check the dna wow uh, uh, so there is a funny thing is some uh, girls will choose to um, remove their wisdom teeth because they think uh, they may be very hurt mm. in when they pregnancy wow. so that time they cannot use some medicine so yes. it will be a, a trouble. Right, right. Yeah, so usually um, wisdom teeth are, they bring trouble as you grow older. So what Maggie is recommending is that some women, they remove their wisdom teeth before they get pregnant because if you get any problem, and actually I think that checking your whole um, yeah. teeth before you get pregnant will be a very wise thing to do. What she's suggesting is that if you get any problems with your teeth, you cannot get medication while you're pregnant. So you will have to, you know, like deal with the, the pain. Girls may, uh, in Chinese, some girls may consult doctors of uh, traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, like me, I consult doctors for maybe half a year. Mm -hmm. So I take some traditional medicine wow. every day uh, uh, and uh, do mas massage, massage, ma massage yeah. uh, and uh, do this uh, moxibustion. Mo uh, it's a special treatment in Chinese. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a kind of um, special grass and uh, uh, roll it in a, a uh, yeah, like a like a longer stick. Uh, it's yeah, just rolled stick, up, rolled yeah. up, and then you burn it, and then it will make a lot of smoke, mm -hmm. and then put the smoke near your skin. Wow! And in some special place in your body, then your body will be better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, somebody think uh, if you take a, a Chinese medicine, uh, you can um, alleviate. Uh, yeah can reduce alleviate yes. sy symptoms because um if like me i have uh all uh, allergies I, I have allergies maybe my baby will the same with me wow yeah so uh, if you drink some chinese medicine maybe your baby is safe <laughs> maybe this is, I, this is so important yeah. i do i like i like the fact that with 
traditional Chinese medicine, you're trying to bring your body back to balance. So we are, our whole body is made of different, it's composed by different parts, right? But they get out of balance as we interact with different kinds of foods, the environment, the pollution, the noise levels, our sleeping habits, like everything that we do with our everyday life changes or gets sometimes our body out of balance. And so what traditional Chinese medicine, I feel like brings brings the back, that's a, the purpose of it. It brings back the body into balance, which is something that Maggie's pointing out that before you get pregnant, you want to try to get your body as clean and as healthy as possible to avoid passing on to your baby any kind of like allergies or illnesses or even malformation just because you're not checking your levels, your hormones. Can, and males also can consult doctors of traditional Chinese wow. medicine. So my husband also do massage and uh, moxibustin. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's make uh, he, his body is healthy. Yes, that was something that I was telling her before we started recording, like how important it is to have both partners working together because um, I feel like in my country, most women are the ones taking over the task of the pregnancy. Like pregnancy is a female only task thing, but it's not. Maggie was sharing with me how her husband and herself are so involved into the process. They both work together, not only supporting each other in the journey, but actually getting healthier and taking medicine and doing massage and doing specific um, Chinese treatments so that both partners can be at their best in their health uh, before they try to get pregnant. Yeah. 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 Very wise. Yeah. And uh, uh, a lot of abnormal practice, uh, pregnancy Pregnancies, is because yeah. of the male's the male body not so good because they cannot make a good embryo embryo, uh, embryo. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh, the baby maybe will go away in three months yeah, yeah. wow in, that's in, deep yeah in chinese the first three months uh, when you pregnant uh, is very dangerous wow. uh, so family will ask you don't move you just lie down so uh, if you have the three months you will be safe. Mm. So then you can do everything. Wow. So the first three months are very important. The health of the baby is so highly influenced by the health of your partner, the male partner in that case. Um, so he needs to be able, he needs to make sure that he checks himself before pregnancy. So uh, this is uh, First step, now we will talk about the second step is when you try to pregnant. Before ovulation, uh, a lot of girls will try to uh, soak feet. Mm -hmm. uh, girls will try to soak feet uh, to warm your body. So, um, and uh, skip rope to make uh, your blood uh, circle make your blood circulation better so uh, the egg can be better and uh, get out your mm. oh, oh view. yes 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 you can that that's that's true i i think that that's really interesting because in mexican traditions also the heat of the body specifically the heat of the womb is a very important Thing. according to Mexican traditional medicine, like we need to make sure that your womb is warm. Mm -hmm. If it's cold, then you're going to have a lot of problems, yeah. health problems and like pain and like your, your period, your the menstruation is going to be very painful. Mostly it could be that the egg is not healthy. And so many of those things are because your womb is cold. And so what Maggie is saying is that many of the women, um, they soak their feet in very hot, it's hot water, right? It's yeah. not like warm, it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, hot water so that the heat 
can um, not only improve circulation, but also warm your um, reproductive system, which is very, very important. Yeah, uh, skip rope is very mm. good to fallopian tubes. tubes. Yeah. Yes. Some, some girls tube is a blockage. Oh, wow. So if you always jump and uh, do skip rope, it's really uh, useful. Wow. Yeah. A lot of girls do this for two or three months mm -hmm. and then they get pregnant. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, so far, Maggie has introduced many of the, the steps, the procedures that she has taken to ensure the health of her body in preparation for pregnancy. Um, however, as she mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, not all the time your attempt to get pregnant will be successful. Sometimes, um, even though she's suggesting all these very wise and very important steps to prepare for pregnancy, that doesn't mean that if you do all of these things, you're going to get pregnant immediately. Some people might struggle with um, infertility and they might not be able to procreate even though they work hard on getting their body ready for it. So Maggie, tell us more about what that journey is when trying to get pregnant is not a successful journey. Tell us more about that. Okay. Uh, if you long term if infertility. If, if you long term infertility, you can do more extra examination, like liquid immunity, mm. uh, vitamin D, uh, and uh, uh, ther thyroid, thyroid, yeah, thyroid function. Like, right. So I I wanted to do um uh, for fellow pen tube mm -hmm. x-ray mm -hmm. uh, but I, I didn't i didn't do it because the month i want to do this examination i find i'm pregnant Aww. so it means the tube is okay right uh, yeah but the the adding not so good mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's a abnormal uh pregnancy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, I, I really appreciate that Maggie sharing that because her journey hasn't been easy. She has been preparing for so long and she has put so much of these knowledge into action. And yet um, the, the pregnancy that she was speaking about wasn't successful. And that is, that's hard. It is hard, I think, to to acknowledge that you have been preparing for so long. And finally, when the time comes, when you, you realize that you're pregnant, but then you know that that's not going to be successful, must be heartbreaking. Um, tell us more about how you deal with that, Maggie. Is it disappointing? Do you feel like, I don't want to try anymore? How do you get yourself out of a heartbreak? So... Uh... I can talk about my uh, two uh, two times abnormal pregnancy. So on um, on uh, January this year, uh, I have the first one abnormal pregnancy. So after that, I feel very anxious. Mm -hmm. So the next month, I go to hospital to take more examination. So I draw eleven tubes of blood wow. to do this examination. So I'm very, I feel very anxious. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but uh, the doctors cannot find out the, the problem. So I just uh, try to practice again. Um, so every month I'm so worried about this. I'm worried to fail. <laughs> so Every month after ovulation, I try the um, pregnancy test. So um, maybe twice a day wow. for four days. So I'm very worried about this. This actuarious lasts last for almost five months. Wow. And uh, um, so on August, I changed a job. And uh, I'm very happy. So I did not put a lot of uh, ac uh, attention mm -hmm. uh, on these things. Then I find I'm 
kindness. Wow. <laughs> Again, so I think mental problem is very important、mm-hmm. uh, if you want to be. Pregnancy. Yes, 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 yes. I I totally support that. I think that mental health is a priority. And like she Maggie saying, the levels of stress and anxiety, and sometimes even like depression, contribute to the the success of a pregnancy or the failure of it. Not all the time. We're not suggesting that certain women are more、um, able to get pregnant because of these or not. But it certainly contributes, and that's a beautiful example too of how, like, when you got relaxed and finally、yeah. calmed down and were happier, you were able to get pregnant again. Yeah, yeah. If you always be very nervous, it will be so difficult. Uh,、yeah. and um,、uh, sometimes you, uh, maybe not happy with your partner, so. It's very important because、yeah. mm. this is. It's also、um, your happiness and your mood also impacts your hormones. If you're happy, then your balance, your hormone now balance will be better yeah. Yeah. than if you're stressed. If you're stressed, and your hormones go like wild. Yeah, as far as I understand how it works, so it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, what you're saying is yeah it makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah. So,、uh, but the August.、Uh, August pregnancy is also a、uh, abnormal.、Uh, mm-hmm. So、uh, I ask a、uh, consult doctors. So I take a lot of medicine and、uh, inject every day by myself. Oh, I inject on my belly,、mm-hmm. and the、uh, the belly become black, blue, green, <laughs> every very colorful belly. <laughs> so、oh uh, very hurt. So maybe.、Mm, Lasts for half month.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so on the、um, pregnancy for nine week, the baby gone. So、mm-hmm. I do surgery. So、uh, the surgery is will hurt a girl's body a lot. It will be very beneficial for women's health to be prepared before pregnancy so that they can avoid having this kind of surgery because after it. Then you have to go back to the beginning, wait for three months, go back to the very beginning, step number one. But your system, your reproductive system, won't be the same after the surgery. So, thank you so much for sharing that, Maggie. You're very wise, <laughs> very strong, very brave. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I will try again after three months.、Mm-hmm. I can. I think I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're sure. We're、yeah. positive that it's、yeah. gonna it's gonna work. Yeah. So next, I will introduce、yeah. some daily maintenance. Uh, this is a suit for every girls, even you don't want to pregnancy. It will make a uterus healthier.、Mm-hmm. Mm, uh, like a、uh, brown sugar ginger soup is、uh, very good for your uterus. It will warm your uterus、mm-hmm. and、um, mm, and it will relieving pain during menstruation. Yes.、Mm, yeah.、Uh, so and、uh, help blood the circulation.、Mm-hmm. So it's a、uh, very good things. So. Yes, 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 yes. I I like. I've been doing、um, rose, ginger,、um, jujube. What's the other thing? Brown sugar. Cinnamon. I don't. I don't think cinnamon, but it's it's all of those in a tea. Yeah. So good. Yeah. It is so delicious. But I also have felt the benefits, the health benefits of, like Maggie suggests. Just doing a daily thing for your body. So, thank you so much, Maggie. That is, it's mind blowing. I feel like some of the things you have shared, I have never heard of before. But it makes so much sense. There's so much wisdom and beauty on what you're sharing, and I feel like it's also so valuable for younger people to know, because we don't talk about these things. I feel like we are not. We we don't know. We, there's no a pregnancy school. Where we go and you know, like, oh, you have to do this and this and that, and definitely, like Maggie said at the beginning, every individual has a different journey. Some women will have、um, different experiences, and that's totally fine. But I feel like talking about it 
makes it easier for the younger generation to have access to this information and prepare better and have better lives as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maggie. Is there anything yeah. else that you would like to say? Uh, I hope this can help more girls and I hope every girl will have a good pregnancy. <laughs> Happy lives, yeah. good pregnancy. So you are not alone. We can work hard uh, together. Yes. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. That's mm. just so beautiful, uh, Maggie. Yeah. We also wish you a successful journey. Thank you. Your... <laughs> yeah. And that brings us to the end of a truly enlightening conversation. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to Maggie Wu for joining us today and sharing such a deeply personal yet universally relatable journey. Maggie, your courage and openness in discussing the challenges and triumphs of preparing for conception have undoubtedly touched many hearts and ignited to our listeners. We hope this episode has shed light on the many facets of the conception journey and has provided you with valuable insights whether you are on this path yourself or supporting someone who is remember every journey is unique discussions that matter make sure to subscribe to goddess of rebirth the podcast on your favorite podcast platform we'll also we would also love to hear your thoughts stories and questions so reach out to me on social media Thank you for tuning in and remember you are not alone. Together, let's continue to learn, grow, and support each other. Until next time, take care and keep striving for health, happiness, and honors. I am thrilled to have you in my circle and I am buzzing with excitement to conjure up some magic together. Remember, in Goddess Unleashed, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the mystical walk. Tune in and transform with me. Until next time, keep your spirits high and your magic untamed.